So the operating theater can be very, very daunting, especially for med students or even junior doctors who haven't actually had the time and experience in that sort of environment, working around those sorts of people. And you just sort of need to know what you can do, what you can't do, who's who, who you need to talk to if you have questions and who different people are in the actual theater themselves. So let's go through that bare bones introduction to the operating theater. Okay, so I've got an image here that sort of depicts a bare basics view of what an operating theater might look like. Obviously, there's all different surgeries and different setups for different procedures. So it'll look slightly different depending on what operation and what theater you are witnessing. So this is just one example, I guess. You've got a pretty generic setup here at the, at the first part. Obviously, there's the patient on the operating table. Then you've got the anesthetist at the head of the patient usually guarded by some sort of you know, drape or some sort of uh, protection from the patient's airway and then the operating field itself. So the anesthetist plus or minus an anesthetic nurse or maybe an anesthetic registrar might be on this side of the table. Then you've got the anesthetic machines all here with the gases that just keep the patient awake, breathing and also asleep. And they probably have some IV poles as well you know, infusing them with all the um, appropriate anesthetic agents. So let's go on to the rest of the image here. So you've got the operating field, which depending on what procedure may just have one operating surgeon or it may have a few. Then apart from the main surgeon themselves, you might have an assistant who is another doctor. Maybe they're an aspiring surgeon, maybe they're a junior registrar, maybe they're a medical student or some other resident. It just depends. Sometimes there's no assistant at all and it's just the surgeon. And then you've also got the scrub nurse. Now the scrub nurse is a nurse who is scrubbed for the purpose of assisting um, the surgeon themselves with regards to all the instruments. And they have this table, usually one or two tables with all the instruments that the surgeon may possibly need for the actual operation itself. So the scrub nurse gets all that stuff ready before. They're often the first ones to scrub uh, for the case um, because they need to set up everything. And then once the patient's asleep, every, everything's done and organized, then the surgeon and the assistant go get scrubbed. So that's sort of how that flow works. The assistant is there and yeah, as I said, may be a junior doctor, resident, medical student. Depending on the case, you may actually have uh, more than one surgeon themselves. Um, I guess here it's good to point out you've got the operating lamps. So if it's an open surgery like this, you'll need to have like little protective um, handle coverings that are sterile that you can put on those. You may also have some suction there, especially if you're doing lots of cutting, you know, you may actually need to um, suck out any bodily fluids away and into the suction chamber. The other person here is the circulating nurse and we don't really call them circulating nurse, but more so like the, um, the scout nurse. And their job is to, you know, go get stuff or open equipment or, you know, whatever changes to the plan. They sort of are like the scrub nurse's assistant or the surgeon's second assistant. And their main role as the circulating nurse or scout nurse is to essentially stay unscrubbed, but then almost act like PRN. So if they need something that's not in the room, the circulating nurse can go and get it and then they can bring it back and open up the piece of equipment and then hand it to the scrub nurse who will then assemble it and then hand it to the surgeon to use in the operation themselves. So that's how this person works. So yeah, there's a few other people here that maybe are not pictured. As I said, the anesthetic nurse, the technician, you may have medical students or student nurses or scrub nurses, whoever. If there's a particular type of equipment being used in the operation, you also have a rep if they're from a specific company that have brought out a different type of piece of equipment or whatnot. And yeah, there's different tools and everything in all these different operations. So the patient may not always be lying flat on their back supine. They may be rolled. They may be in lithotomy with their legs up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different positions that the patient may be in. So yeah, that's just a generic setup. Let's go on to the other images now. So here's something similar with actual real life people. Um, as we see here, you can sort of see where the patient would be, their heads here with their like little gown. You've got a drape there. You've got the operating surgeon. 
plus or minus one or two assistants. This person looks like the main operating surgeon and maybe this is the assistant and then maybe this is like a medical student or a more junior doctor, hard to say. It depends what step the operation is at and you know who people actually are because you don't actually have name badges. Um, and presumably the anesthetist is somewhere over this way and you've got the scrub nurse there with um, their uh, operating table with all the actual you know instruments and everything all set up ready to go um, then you've got some person here I'm not too sure who this is maybe they're a medical student maybe they're a rep maybe they're a supervising consultant it depends like if this is the operating surgeon and they're a more junior person then the consultant may actually not be scrubbed and just watching the case supervising them from afar and you know they are in the operating theater so they technically is, is their patient but they need to sort of give the reins up at some stage yeah one of the ways consultants let junior doctors level up is essentially staying unscrubbed in the theater but supervising from afar and letting those junior doctors level up and do the surgeries themselves now you've also got some other people in the background here whether they're technicians or other nurses hard to say but there's just some other people watching from afar. And, and one of those people would be the scout nurse, if not this person here. Um, as I said, don't really know and you can't assume, but this person just looks very like interested in the actual steps of the, of the case. So they may be the consultant. Um, you also got some machines here. This looks like the diathermy machine, the electrocautery device that uses to, you know, zap the tissue either to cut or to coagulate. Um, and then there's probably some other, you know, bits and pieces over here. Uh, you've got the uh, operating headlights or lamps and yeah, they look like maybe they have like a little um, sterile, um, sterile handle there, but hard to say. And yeah, I guess maybe this is a bit weird, but you've got all these like floating power points there. That's just so stuff can get out of the way and no one like trips on it and people actually see the cords and everything. So yeah. That's what it looks like in real life. Let's go into the next image as well. So for this image, we've got a bit more of an open operating theater. There's no patient, there's no setup. It's just people who are in the theater themselves sort of chatting about one thing or another, hard to say. I guess you can see the operating table in all its light. You've got the headrest for the patient. You've got the sort of table or I don't know, platform that the operating theater is positioned on and they can adjust the operating table in different ways and they can move the patient up down left or right whatever they need um, so there that's just one thing to point out that the operating table is fixed in the middle of the room and then the patient gets transported via a bed on wheels um, into the bed and then they slide across or hover mat across or something like that so there's different ways you can get the patient on and off the operating table um, if it's just a normal straightforward procedure, maybe they can just walk into the room and hop onto the table themselves. But most of the time we transport them via the bed um, and then slide them across or get them to wiggle across themselves, just depends. So yeah, that's that. Um, I guess you've got all this equipment here. You've got like this, um, you know, machine table, maybe it's diathermy. You've got a whole bunch of different screens, which essentially, are attached by these little arms um, at the roof of the room and they can swing around flipping into whatever position the surgeon needs to see them and um, you've got the operating lamps there as well um, and a whole bunch of other stuff over this side that you can plug in whether it's you know machines or cameras or whatnot so you can do that over there and um, but yeah i guess it's a pretty big space there's lots of uh, places to put things there's lots of stuff that you may not notice if there's a patient in the room, but you can sort of point out and look at in, in this image because there's a bunch of, you know, empty space, which you don't actually appreciate and you can become so focused on the patient themselves. So yeah, that's just the basic couple of images for the operating theater, who's who, what people are and what they do and how everything looks like as it's set up. So hopefully that just gives you a bare bones introduction so you don't walk in and think, what am I doing? Where is this? What is this doing there? What is this sort of machine? Um, this is the absolute basics. So there's obviously heaps more detail that you can know. And that's the whole purpose of spending time in the operating theater itself. 
So you get to learn stuff, you get to ask people, you get to talk to patients, you get to watch operations. And that's the best way to learn is just be there, put in the reps and get the experience. But yeah, hopefully that helps. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.